Imagine one single note and the room gets bigger. A melody and you are suddenly 20 years younger, standing in a different place, the smell of rain, the curve of a laugh. That electrical shiver you call getting chills is not poetry, it's chemistry. Music is a cheat code for the brain. It cuts through thought, drills straight into feeling, and then rewrites the way your circuits talk to each other. Today we're going to unpack how, from the first vibration on your eardrum to the dopamine rush in your reward centers, music literally reshapes your emotional brain. Why this matters. Music is not just entertainment. It's a tool that can alter mood, memory, motivation, and even learning. That makes it one of the most subtle and most powerful therapies we already carry in our pockets. The Ear to Brain Highway. How sound becomes meaning. Sound arrives as pressure waves. Your ear transduces those waves into neural spikes in the cochlea. From there, the signal rockets through the brainstem to the thalamus, then to the auditory cortex, where pitch, rhythm, timbre, and tempo are parsed in milliseconds. But music doesn't stop at analysis. In a fraction of a second, the pattern is broadcast to emotional centers, the amygdala, insula, and nucleus accumbens. That's why music can be both heard and felt almost simultaneously. So the ear is basically a black box translator. Yeah, but with VIP access to your feelings. Early auditory processing is fast. The brain identifies basic pitch patterns in tens of milliseconds, then hands off to emotional networks. The amygdala, music's shortcut to emotion. The amygdala is the brain's alarm and valence center. Danger, reward, threat, love, it flags emotional significance. Musical features like sudden loudness, minor keys, or dissonance drive immediate amygdala responses. That's why a horror score jump makes your chest tighten before you understand why you're scared. Music can bypass high-level cognitive filtering and directly recruit primitive emotional circuits, producing instantaneous visceral reactions. So a movie score is literally hacking your alarm system? Exactly. That ominous low chord is emotional malware. Neuroscience reviews show consistent amygdala activation to emotionally salient music across studies. Dopamine, anticipation, and the peak moment. One of the most striking discoveries in music neuroscience is that music releases dopamine, the brain's chemical of anticipation and reward. But it's not a simple music equals dopamine rule. The brain distinguishes anticipation from peak pleasure. Dopamine spikes both as the music builds, anticipation, and at the climactic resolution. This two-stage dopamine pattern explains why a slowly rising string line makes your skin crawl, and why the payoff chord sends your brain into bliss. That explains why I get goosebumps before the chorus. Your brain is betting on a musical outcome, and it pays off. Human PET and fMRI studies show dopamine release in the nucleus accumbens and striatum during peak musical moments. Memory meets melody, the hippocampus, and nostalgia. Music is a powerful cue for autobiographical memory. The hippocampus and associated medial temporal structures link music to episodic memories, not just facts, but vivid, emotional scenes from our past. A short clip of a song can retrieve a cascade of sensory detail faster than a photograph. Those personal links make music uniquely effective in therapy. A melody can pull a drowning memory back to the surface and relight its emotions. So a song is basically a time machine? A neural one, with a hippocampal engine. Functional imaging and behavioral studies show music-evoked autobiographical memories strongly recruit hippocampus-led networks and produce higher vividness than many other cues. The predictive brain, why tension and release matter. Music is a structured prediction game. Your auditory system builds statistical models of pattern and expectation. Composers play this like a magician, build tension, break the rule, then resolve. That tension resolution dynamic is what activates predictive reward circuits. Dopamine rewards correct predictions and also the emotional thrill when predictions are artfully violated in pleasing ways. Over time, repeated exposure to a style rewires these predictive models changing your baseline emotional response to those musical patterns. So pop hooks train your brain's prediction machine? Yep, that's the neuroscience of earworms. Chills, tears, and body responses when music becomes somatic. Some listeners experience intense somatic responses, chills, tears, piloerection, during music. These are not metaphors. They are measurable autonomic reactions, heart rate changes, skin conductance spikes, and pupil dilation. They correlate with activity in limbic and paralimbic regions and with the release of neurochemicals. These bodily responses are how music turns a pattern into a personal event. 
Physiological studies link extreme music-evoked responses with synchronized activity across auditory cortex, limbic system, and reward pathways. From pleasure to plasticity, how repeated exposure rewires circuits. Pleasure is the gateway to learning. When a piece of music repeatedly triggers reward and emotional arousal, it promotes synaptic plasticity, the strengthening of circuits that encode that music-emotion link. This is how a lullaby becomes calming across decades, or how a protest chant becomes energizing. Over weeks and months, music shapes connectivity patterns in the auditory cortex, hippocampus, amygdala, and prefrontal cortex, literally changing the wiring of emotion. So playlists are like workout programs for your emotional brain? Exactly, but with fewer squats and more goosebumps. Clinical power, music as medicine. We're not just talking about theory. Personalized music interventions improve mood, reduce agitation in dementia, and aid rehabilitation. Studies of tailored playlists and music-based therapies report measurable reductions in behavioral symptoms and improvements in quality of life for people with cognitive decline. That's why clinicians now use individualized music as a low-risk, high-impact tool in care settings. Grandma's old songs actually help her remember? There's real data showing that personalized music can reconnect memory and calm agitation. Clinical trials and program evaluations demonstrate benefits of personalized music interventions in dementia care and mood regulation. The near future, personalized and AI-driven music. AI can already model emotional responses and generate music tailored to a listener's physiological state, heart rate, activity, mood history. That means the next wave is adaptive music, soundtracks that adjust in real time to lower anxiety, enhance focus, or scaffold memory retrieval. Early research and pilot projects show promise, but rigorous clinical validation is still catching up. So my phone could one day compose a track that calms my panic before I feel it? Yep, adaptive playlists that know you better than you do. When music heals, rewiring trauma, anxiety, and depression. Music doesn't just trigger emotions, it can reshape emotional regulation itself. In people with depression, activity in the prefrontal cortex and reward circuits is often blunted. Music, especially personally meaningful music, can temporarily restore dopamine signaling, creating windows where emotional processing becomes possible again. In anxiety disorders, predictable rhythmic structures help stabilize the autonomic nervous system, lowering heart rate variability and reducing amygdala overactivity. And in PTSD, carefully guided music therapy helps reconnect traumatic memories stored in the amygdala with context processing regions in the hippocampus, reducing emotional overload. Wait, so music isn't just comforting, it's literally helping the brain reprocess fear? Yes, in the right context, music becomes a bridge between emotion and cognition. Clinical studies show that music-based interventions can reduce cortisol levels, improve emotional labeling, and enhance therapy outcomes when paired with psychological treatment. This isn't magic, it's neuroplasticity guided by sound. Why sad music can feel good, the emotional paradox. One of the strangest effects of music is that sad music can feel comforting or even pleasurable. Neuroscience explains this paradox. Sad music activates the default mode network, self-reflection, the insula, emotional awareness, the nucleus accumbens, reward, but without triggering real-world threat. Your brain experiences emotional depth without danger, releasing prolactin, a hormone linked to soothing and bonding. So when I listen to sad music, my brain knows it's safe sadness? Exactly. You're rehearsing emotion without consequences. This is why humans across cultures use music for grief rituals, mourning, and emotional release. Music gives pain structure, and structure makes pain survivable. Music and learning, why songs stick forever. Music dramatically enhances memory encoding. Why? Because it binds information to emotion, rhythm, prediction. This triple lock makes musical information harder to forget. That's why you remember childhood songs decades later. Language learners recall vocabulary better with melody. Alzheimer's patients can recall lyrics when other memories fail. So the alphabet song is basically a neuroscience hack? One of the earliest and best. Music recruits multiple brain systems simultaneously, strengthening synaptic connections and reducing memory decay. Music isn't just something you hear, it's something your brain becomes. It is one of the few tools capable of crossing logic, memory, emotion, and body. And that makes it one of the most powerful forces shaping the human experience. If you love science that reveals how your mind truly works, and stories that change the way you see yourself, subscribe to Science Unlocked.